he's back, bro. He's back. He was tapped in with our boy uh, who was on the last interview. Uh, yes, Voodoo. sir. Shout out, Voodoo. Voodoo. Shout out, Voodoo. You know what I'm saying? He be doing his thing. That boy's real. You know, he's real. Pers- I like his production, bro, because you could tell, like, a lot of people just slap out beats that sound like somebody else's beat. You know yeah. what I'm saying? People just get on there and just do the boom, boom. You know, whatever whatever it is, bro, the simple, the easy, easy, put it up. And it sounds like everybody else, bro. Voodoo really got a specific way he does his production, bro. And I like I like how he does his beats, bro. So oh, yeah, how did uh how did he's back with Rudy? How do y'all how do y'all link up, bro? How many how much work have y'all done together, bro? What what's 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 the relationship between you and Voodoo like? Man, look, that's uh it's like a little brother to me, man. That's uh and when I say little brother, I mean that in the most term, but not like I'm trying to little brother. He's younger than me, you know what I'm saying? Right. I see him as strictly a peer as a you know what i'm saying like we are on the same level that's a little brother to me and the fact that we family you know what i'm saying right. he to be honest i uh was a little sick when y'all did the interview with him because i was like god damn it now everybody's about to be tapping in with him now i ain't gonna hey he's made he i'm talking about like bro right now we probably got like 15 unreleased songs like mm. he is my primary producer he's the guy that i primary go to for beats so now when I saw him on this on y'all on this interview, I'm like, dog, everybody's ready for not that I don't want him to blow up, but I just kind of blow up gotta... with him. You know what I'm saying? Like we do our thing together, bro. Yeah. Uh, a little bit on that selfish tip. I'm uh, you know, being honest, and you know, just a little bit on that selfish tip. It's like, man, uh, everybody's gonna be wanting to work with voodoo. Uh, I work with voodoo back uh, up, you know what I'm saying? Like as my producer, you feel me? Uh, but crazy talented dog and like even from the beginning, I've set him up with them um, because I was getting in studios and stuff before I met with Voodoo, just doing my YouTube beat thing. And I've realized that it's not the way to go anymore, bro. Like I need original content. I'm on Apple Music, Spotify, Dozer, everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Title. In order to do that, you need original beats and shit. So he what he randomly cause just one day hit me in my DMs. He was like, hey. I really, really like your music. And this is like, I don't, I didn't really know, dude. I mean, I went to school with him and shit. I didn't really know him because I really mm-hmm. like your music. Here's some beats. First person to ever do that. Now I've had that happen to me plenty of times since then. Now, like now that I'm dropping more and I'm getting a more professional sound, um, something that he tapped on that actually does happen a lot as a rapper up and coming. If engineers and producers like you, they will literally send you beat packs just to put their name in front of other people. So that's what he did. He sent me a beat pack. And he did something that not a lot of people who do hit my DMs did first. He listened to my music and he sent me beats catered to me. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people will send me just a beat pack of variety of beat. He sent me beats that were like, I know you can get on this. Out of the first 10 beats he sent me, I think like in a week I had four songs to him already, which is saying a lot you know what i'm saying it's i'm not i don't go in there and freestyle ever i, I i'm a pen to paper kind of dude i write my shit down and i go in there practicing in the mirror for hours i go in there i can't because you know i'm i i want to be a rapper i won't ball out but at this moment in time i don't got the money to go and pay 60 80 dollars an hour in studio time and waste it so everything i do is very calculated when i get in the studio it's i get in there it's take me about 20 minutes to record this song top to bottom then we're going to go in, throw our ad-libs in in five minutes, and then we're going to sit here and we're going to get it to a point where I can listen to it in the car, you know what I'm saying? And then I'll send it to have it mixed. Right. So with him, it's just like he understands my sound. He understands the versatility within me. And on a better note, for anybody that is looking to like get in on that, to find a producer that you can have that kind of relationship with, don't just hit your producer about music, bro. You got to hit your producer and hip him to the things that you are hip to. Like, sometimes I just call Voodoo and I'm just like, like, we'll just sit there and talk for 30 minutes about anything and everything. Why? Because him knowing these specific things about my personality lets him cater beats to me more because he knows me. He knows the things that I'm into. And just like the subtle things, like if he knows that I'm into Naruto, you know what I'm saying? He might, in the background of a beat, subtly put in like a sample from a Naruto beat and that automatically will make it harder to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I might not even hear it immediately, bro. So a lot of the thing with him is I take, I've taken the time to really like care. You know what I'm saying? I care about him as a person. So it's like, 
I hate him. How's your daughter doing? You know what I'm saying? How you doing? Where you? How you? How you are mentally? You feel me? Which is another thing that, as artists, we really need to be looking out for each other. Like creative, creative people. I have found, and you know, this is just my opinion. Creative people tend to feel a lot harder than people that don't like to create. We tend to be more emotionally invested in things, and we tend to uh, be a lot more empathetic about things. But at the forefront, we care a lot harder. Right. I've realized that it's easier for my creatives that I'm around to slip into depression than anybody else because they feel, they understand deeper, I feel, and they're more in tune with their emotions because they're trying to, they're always trying to convey how they feel on the inside. So like just main, hitting him and just making sure he's okay, you can tell the appreciation he has for that. And that's one thing that helps us get closer. Us being closer means that we make better music. Us making better music just means that I have more confidence because it's one of the things that I really wish he would have touched on is like the confidence issue that comes with making music, bro. Like, yeah, I don't think I'm bad at, I don't think I'm bad at creating music, but I put other people on such this higher pedestal because I'm looking at them like, wow, they can create this. I can be doing something like that. And it gives me a little like trepidation when it comes to dropping my music or even letting people hear it. But like I just kind of got I kind of got through that shit. I just you know what I'm saying, smoke my little blunt, drop it. You feel me? Or have other people drop it for me? You feel me? It just if it's weak, oh well. I mean, all I need is one, two people to hear it, like it. You feel me? And even if you don't like it, at least you listened. You know what I'm saying? 